Hello and welcome to this very special occasion uh, when we as a church family, both those who are gathered here in the building and those who are watching uh, online, uh, join with the Hastings family and their friends for the baptism of Field, uh, Field James Peter. So welcome, whether you're here in the building or, or online. Uh, and a very warm welcome in particular to Rob and to Sharon and to Field and to their friends and family. Uh, it's a delight to have you all here uh, today uh, and uh, I know that Rob and Sharon are so grateful to you all uh, for and to the church family for all the love and support that you have shown to them. Uh, as we will go on, I will be, uh, we will be thinking a little bit about the meaning and significance of baptism. Uh, baptism points us towards the love and grace of God towards sinners. And so I'd like to read the most famous verse from the Bible, John 3, 16. It says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Friends, let's uh, open our time in prayer. Let's pray. Loving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we praise you that in your grace you purposed to save sinners. We thank you, Father, that you sent your Son into the world, that he was born as a baby of the Virgin Mary, that he grew up as a child and developed into adulthood. In his one perfect person, he was fully and truly God and fully and truly man. Thank you that in his death and resurrection, he has made eternal life and relationship with you open to all who trust in him. And these benefits are applied to us by your Holy Spirit who dwells in all who receive you by faith. We thank you this day for the gift of new life in the birth of Field. We give you praise for his safe delivery and his birth into a household that knows and trusts in you. Our God, we confess that we are all born sinners. And so we thank you that you did not leave us in our helpless state, but in Christ you have provided the Saviour for sinners. And so we ask, loving Father, that we would know you with us this day, and that as Field is presented for baptism, we would give thanks for the promise to which baptism points. And we pray that in time that promise might become real in Field's life, and in each of our lives, as we trust in Christ alone. In his name, and for your glory's sake, we pray. Amen. Well, as we come to consider the significance of baptism, I would first like to read some verses from Mark chapter 10. Mark 10, verses 13 to 16. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little, little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them and blessed them. This is God's word. I'm going to make a few comments about those verses in a moment, but I'd like to talk about the meaning of baptism, why we do it, and what it is all about. Baptism is a great visual display of the gospel, the good news of Jesus. The Lord Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And on the day of Pentecost, the Apostle Peter said, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promises for you, and for your children, and for all who are far off, everyone whom our, the Lord our God calls to himself. So we baptise because Jesus told us to. By baptism, we welcome someone into Christ's visible church. Baptism provides a picture of washing. It points to what God has done for our spiritual need. It, it tells us that by nature we were unclean in sin and that we need to be made clean 
Just as water washes away dirt, so God cleanses us from all sin through what Jesus has done on the cross. Baptism is about what God has done. So that's the picture. It's a, it's a picture of washing. It is a picture that makes a promise. God promises that the cleansing from sin that is pictured here will be true for the person who trusts Jesus. So here God's promise through the prophet Ezekiel, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. Obviously the, the outward washing doesn't do that inward work, it's not magic. Baptism does not make anyone a Christian. By itself, it is neither necessary for salvation, nor does it guarantee it. It points to what God alone does by his grace, through his spirit, on account of his son's finished work. We receive the promised blessings by faith. So it's a picture that makes a promise. In the language of scripture, it is a sign and seal of God's covenant of grace. Since the time of Abraham, children of God's people have been included, welcomed within the community of God's people. God's promises are for them. So although uh, Phil doesn't quite understand these things just yet, it's his privilege as the child of Christian believers to be included, welcomed into the community of God's people and to receive the sign of God's covenant promise. In baptizing Phil, we are welcoming him into the visible family of God's people, we're saying that the promises of God pictured here are extended to him. And we pray that he will know the truth of this cleansing from sin in his life, when by God's grace, he receives the Lord Jesus as his saviour by faith. So friends, this is what baptism is about. But I want to say today that this welcome and cleansing from sin is open to any of us today. I love those verses we read from Mark. I think it's a wonderful thing to see today that Jesus cherishes children. But these verses also point to how any of us can receive life from Jesus and welcome into his kingdom. Jesus says, the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. The striking thing in that scene from Mark is how different Jesus's attitude is from that of the disciples and the culture of his day. In Jesus's day, children were nobodies. They had no status or rights. So the disciples see people bringing kids, babes in arms to Jesus, and they think, that's, that's beneath Jesus. You know, why are they wasting the Messiah's time like this? But to Jesus, every life matters. Field's life matters. And your life matters. Jesus says the kingdom of God belongs to the likes of children. The kingdom is entered only as it is received, as little children receive something. Now what's Jesus' point? It's not that there's some virtue in children that children possess that makes the kingdom of God theirs. It's not that somehow they're innocent or something like that. It's precisely that they are nobodies and dependent. They receive what's given to them. Uh, with empty hands. Friends, none of us could stand before God as those who are high and mighty. Uh, I wonder, uh, have you faced up to how far each of us has fallen short of God's glory uh, and holiness? We all need his cleansing and forgiveness. The only way God's kingdom can be entered is as we come to him as nobodies, with empty hands, as those with no credits, no clout, no claims, as somebody has put it. We simply come to Jesus and receive God's salvation as a gift, as we trust in him. The kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And so as we come to this baptism, I want to say to everyone here and online that the promises of God pictured here in baptism of welcome and cleansing are open to us all if we will turn to Jesus. Here is the invitation to us all today. We can be welcomed by Jesus into his kingdom if we will receive him like little children, not claiming any virtue of our own, but coming with empty hands as nobodies and taking what he longs to give us. I pray that we might all receive from Jesus in this way as we see the picture of God's promise before us in the sacrament of baptism. Amen.
Well, at this point, I'm going to invite uh, Rob and Sharon and Phil to come to the, the front just here. Uh, but as the, the, the family of God's covenant people in this place, we all have responsibilities to undertake today. So as a congregation, can we all please stand? I've got a couple of questions that I'm going to put to Rob and to Sharon. I'm going to ask them to give a hearty response so we can hopefully all hear it. Uh, and then I've got a question for us all uh, as God's family in this place. So, Rob and Sharon, this sacrament lays solemn duties upon you as parents to make confession of your faith before God and to promise to bring field up in that faith. So in presenting field for baptism, do you profess your faith in God as your creator and father, in Jesus Christ as your Lord and saviour, and in the Holy Spirit as your sanctifier and guide? I do. I do. Great. Do you promise by God's grace to provide by your prayers, teaching and example, a Christian home for field? to raise him in the nurture and word of the Lord and in the fellowship of his church, and to pray that he may come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. I do. To the congregation. This sacrament lays solemn duties on us all as the people of God in this congregation. We were all baptised by one spirit into one body. We are committed together to the Christian nurture of field in support of his parents, Rob and Sharon. Do you who now receive, who now in Christ's name receive field into the fellowship of the church, promise with God's help so to order your congregational life and witness that he may grow up in the knowledge and love of God and be continuously surrounded by Christian example and influence? We do. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Let me just explain that in the light of restrictions around coronavirus, Field is going to remain in Sharon's arms. Uh, I'm going to put on a face mask to approach them. Uh, we are going to use bottled water that I haven't touched. So the first thing I need to do is I need to open this for the first time. I'm not touching the water. I'm going to pour it into a little jug that I have here. This is finest Evian water comes from near the, the southern shores of Lake Geneva. Other brands are available. Field, James, Peter, Hastings, I baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> this child is now received into the fellowship of Christ's church. We pray that he will live his life according to this beginning and that he will not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Amen. Well done, guys. You ought to take your, your seat again. Well, friends, um, please do be seated. One of our music groups here at the church, uh, Mirth, has uh, uh, kindly recorded a couple of songs uh, for us, especially for this occasion, for this service. So a big thank you to them. The first piece that they have recorded is the Aaronic Blessing. So they're going to appear on the screen. Uh, and if you feel comfortable so to do, as you remain seated with your masks on, do join in. As a church family, let us sing together the blessing of God upon field. Uh, in the words of the ironic blessing. Sharon, 
we have welcomed your son field into the fellowship of God's people. We give thanks for your desire uh, that he would know and belong to the Lord all his days. You've promised to provide him with a Christian home that he may respond to the message of God's grace and faith. May God give you grace so to do. We would like to present you with a Bible as a sign of our love uh, that you may teach fields from infancy the scriptures that are able to make him wise for salvation. Friends, let us all now pray for Field and for Rob and for Sharon. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you that in your infinite mercy and goodness, you have promised not only to be our God, but also the God and Father of our children. And you have received Field by baptism into the life of your church. Please guard and guide Field all his days. May your love hold him. Your truth guide him, and your joy delight him. May he grow strong in body and mind, and come to faith in Jesus as Lord and Saviour. Make his home a place of safety and security, and help his parents, Rob and Sharon, to teach him your truth and lead him in your ways. We pray for all the families in this congregation. May you be cherished in all our homes. May your presence in our midst transform our lives, and may all our children grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, the Lord Jesus describes himself as being the Good Shepherd, and we entrust Field and Rob and Sharon to the care of the Good Shepherd today, but we also, may we also entrust ourselves to him. Uh, Mirth has recorded a second song, especially for us, it's written by uh, the Gettys. It acknowledges God as our shepherd. It includes these words. Show me how to follow, Lord. Keep me close to you. You are the shepherd. I belong to you. May that be our prayer today. This song may be new to us. Let's listen. If you feel comfortable to do so, you can, of course, join in. But let us listen to You Are the Shepherd.
Well, thank you all so much for joining with us today. And again, we very much pray for God's blessing upon you, Rob and Sharon, and on the field as well. Let us close this time by saying the words of the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.